started good manager over to you thank you okay so we i'm going to uh um Magan to Miranda Syagina Jana Salakaya Chaksu Unmilitam Yena Tasma Shri Gudavena Maha Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasnaya Bhutale Shimakti Bhakti Vedanta Swamini Tinamine Namaste Saraswati Deve Gorvani Pacharine Nevase Sasunyavadi Pastyatya De Satarine Jaisi Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadhar Srivasari Gaur Bhakti Vrindam Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama Rama Rama, Rama Hare Hare hmm. We have such few people on today. Hmm. Has this been like this every day? Let me send a message in the group. Um, we only have seven people on, including you. Mm -hmm. Usually it's much more than that. I've sent a message in the group. Okay. Okay, we're slowly gathering the tribes here. We're up to ten. Eleven. I'll do the Mangala Charana Om Gyan Timiranda Sya Gina Jana Salata Yatsun Mili Tamyani Tas Mesha. Sri-chita-chita-chita-chita-chita-chita-chita-chita-chita-chita-chita-chita-chita-chita-chita-chita-chita-chita-chita-chita-chita-chita-chita-chita-chita-chita-chita-chita-chita-chita-chita-chita-
Matsarvasya Padambo Jo Radha Madana Mohano Divya Rinda Kalpa Druma Sri Ratnagar Singhasana So Sri Sri Radha Sila Govinda Devo Vistali B. Savya Mana Smarami Srimad Rasada Sadam B. Vamsi Vata Tatasti Taha Karsan Venu Tata Gopir Gopina Stays Dunaha Taptakan Shinagodam Gi Rad He Brindavane Sude Vishapanu Suti Devi Pranamami Hari Priye Daisi Krishna Jaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadakar Srivasadi Gaur Bhakta Rindam Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare So I was thinking it would be nice to hear the glories of the Holy Name. And of course we find we would like to speak the glories of the Holy Name as much as we could and every day if possible. But we choose certain days in order to highlight some of the uh, aspects of the Holy Name, its glories, its position above everything else, its its supreme position as the highest form of spiritual practice in the age of Kali. It's, uh, It's protection for the devotees. Uh, there are so many aspects to the Lord's holy name because Krishna's holy name is Krishna. And to understand that principle is not possible by the human intelligence. How a name can be a person. But this is the nature of the spiritual nomenclature. That on the spiritual categories... Everything is absolute. There is no duality. Therefore, Krishna's name is Krishna. Krishna's forms are Krishna. Krishna's pastimes are Krishna. Krishna's qualities are also Krishna. But particularly, the name is outstandingly because it's given special position in this age as the means for glorifying the Lord and the means for purifying the heart. So those who actually chant every day with enthusiasm and determination and with as much devotion they can access, they will understand what is this process of bhakti because it centers around the glorification of the Holy Lord. I'm going to read from different quotes from different shastras, which highlight the glories of the holy name. And I was thinking that the devotees at any time can uh, come on and stop me at that point, and I will discuss the one I'm reading, or we will, uh, or they can come on, give a comment or ask a question based on what is being read. So if you think that's a good idea, just be ready to listen carefully. And if you wanna make a comment or ask a question, or you wanna hear me expand on the particular statement that I make, then please, uh, we might use a word interrupt so we can access that, that means of discussion. So this one is from the Shikshastika. It says, let there be victory for the chanting of the holy name of Lord Krishna. This one's from Padma Purana. The holy name of Krishna is transcendentally blissful. It bestows all spiritual benedictions. For it is Krishna himself, the reservoir of all pleasure. The next one is from Harina, Sri Harinam Chintamani. The holy name is the essence of everything. 
Hare Next. Krishna, Guru Mark. Yes. Yes. So on this one, um, as you mentioned in the last class, I think um, when in London, you mentioned about five things which were highlighted. Uh, for a devotee to do basically hearing uh, you know sh uh, listening Srimad Bhagavatam association of the devotees and worshipping the deity and visiting the dham so so when it says uh, holy name is essence of everything what does it mean like uh, it, it, can we just chant and then not do anything else like this is what my question is well this is very much an exclusive statement glorifying the the supreme position of the holy name is that you might say that if one is doing everything but is not doing not chanting the holy name one is not really doing anything because in this age the holy name is the means for self-realization and what it means from the positive point of view is that if you're chanting the holy name of the lord and you're actually chanting, mm -hmm. then all of the other benefits that come by all of the other process of spiritual life is automatically included in the chanting of the Holy Name. Makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Thank you. The one number four. This one is. A statement by Srila Prabhupada. We must always remember that the chanting of the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra is our life our, and our soul. Our life and soul. Number five. Rupa Goswami says, I do not know how much nectar the two syllables Krishna have produced. When the holy name of Krishna is chanted, appears to dance within the mouth. That must be happening at the very highest stages, Guru Maharaj, isn't it? <laughs> it doesn't happen to me for sure. <laughs> this is a statement of ecstasy, obviously, by the Srila Rupa Goswami, that he's, he's tasting the sweetness of the holy name very strongly. And it, the holy name is dancing, and Krishna is dancing, and you're dancing. <laughs> Three people are dancing. This is from Sanatana Goswami. The holy name of Krishna is the highest nectar. It is my very life and my only treasure. This one is a quotation from Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita. In this age of Kali, the holy name of the Lord, the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, is the uh, incarnation of Lord Krishna. So that is Kali Kale, Nama Rupa, Krishna Avatar, Nama Hoite Haya Sarvajigat, Mr. Ravana. Krishna has descended in the form of the holy name in this, in this age. The holy name is the incarnation of the Lord. This one is from Srimad Bhagavatam in the second chapter. O King, constantly chanting of the holy name of the Lord after the ways of the great authorities is the doubtless and fearless way of success for all. Devotees, please jump in, comment if you if you have any questions. It would be nice to have an interactive session. Thank you. Marash, um, could you repeat that last one, please? I was very inattentive. I'm sorry. This, is, this one is from uh, Sukadevo Swami is addressing Maharaj Pariksit. O King, constant chanting of the holy name of the Lord after the ways of the great authorities is a doubtless and fearless way of success for all. That means following in the footsteps of the great authorities who teaches the process of chanting the holy name. Along with the chanting, this means that all success in spiritual life is guaranteed. Mars, the fearless part, 
does that that, does that mean that the we become fearless by chanting holy name and developing faith in it or is it another aspect it's one one of the characteristics of uh, the holy name that brings fearlessness uh, uh, when Prabhupada was asked one time, when you chant the holy name, how do you feel? He says, I feel fearless. There's no, nothing can, dis- in other words, there's no fear. One feels like that he was a insurmountable, immovable, powerful. And that is not a, just a feeling. And it's the fearless way, it says. So there are other ways for practicing spiritual life. Well, we may not come to the process of fearlessness unless we take the process as given by the acharyas, which is the chanting of the holy name according to their direction. Uh, next one Thank is from Harinam Chintamani. Lord Krishna is holy. Somebody speaking? No, Guru Maharaj, uh, no one is there. Lord Krishna and his holy name are identical. They are one and the same absolute truth. The next one, oh, this one's from Padyavali, which is a compilation of statements by different acharyas given by Srila Rupa Goswami. All glories to that holy name of the Lord, which is auspicious for the entire world. The next one is by is from Sri Hari Nam Chintamani, which was which is about Srila Haridas Thakur's teaching of the holy name given by Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur. And it says the holy name is the essence of all scriptures. The next one is by Jiva Goswami. Maharaj, sorry. Could I interrupt and just ask the, the last one? So if the holy name is the essence of all scriptures, is that saying Krishna is the essence of all scriptures? Yeah, Krishna says that in the Bhagavad Gita. Vidaisuchaham aham eva vedyo vidanta kridveda vedeva chaham. I am the compiler of the Vedas. I am the knower of the Vedas. The Vedas are meant to know me. A Vedic knowledge is meant to know Krishna, who, which is the essence of all teaching. Thank you, Maharaj. Krishna comes in the form of his name. This one is Jiva Goswami. Chanting the holy name is the chief means of attaining love, Godhead. The next one is a statement by Srila Prabhupada. When a devotee chants the holy name, Krishna and his internal potency are dancing on his tongue. Guru Maharaj, I would like to ask um, uh, one question on the previous one. When you mentioned that uh, holy name and Krishna are identical, uh, however, I feel personally that I I get more attached to the deity of the Lord uh, than uh, than that attachment to the holy name. And uh, and when you see like it just uh, yeah that stage hasn't come when you when you chant the holy name you feel that uh, you know uh, a blissful bliss uh, when you're looking at the deity. So uh, when it says that Krishna and the deity is like sorry Krishna and the name is same, it just that stage come to a very, you know, I think um, a very elevated stage when, when you realize uh, this, that Krishna and the name is same. 
Yeah, there's definitely a realized stage. It's not something that you can theoretically. Yes. You can accept it as being theoretical because it is given by the Shastras, it's given by the Acharyas. So therefore we can accept it because it is authoritative. Mm. To realize it is, an, is, the level of, is the level of practice of perfection, at least to some degree. Krishna may also reveal to his devotee the glories of the holy name just as an experience, even though the devotee may not be on the highest platform. Krishna can do that. And he does. Krishna devotees get realizations, they get spiritual experiences. Mm -hmm. So we have a comment, uh, Guru Maharaj, from, from iPhone. I don't know whose iPhone is that. <laughs> I'll just read the comment. Shri Chaitanya Charitamata Madhya Lila 15108. There is a quote which says, unless one is initiated by a bona fide spiritual master, all devotional activities is useless. Can you explain this point better? Uh, thanks, Guru Deva. Yeah, we that 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 stay that question was asked uh, by uh, Scarlett about two weeks ago in the same statement. And we, we we dealt with that. That means that although you are practicing chanting and uh, serving, and you're not initiated, that means you're coming to the platform of beginning the platform classes of bhakti. In other words, it's not absolutely useless, but if you don't take it to that stage, then whatever you gain, you gain very little or hardly anything. In other words, if you're standing on the on the side of a river and you want to go swimming, you get an idea what the water's like, how deep it is, how cold it is, and you feel and then you go in a little bit. So that's like before initiation. So you're practicing, you're chanting, you're reading, you're serving, you're associating. But all of that is meant to lead you to the point of the third stage, which is bhajana kriya, which is take shelter of a bona fide spiritual master and eventually get initiated. If we don't come to that stage, then that's what that's, that statement means. That you've gone to the river, you are um, testing the water, but then you go away without going in. So Prabhupada would always say that initiation means beginning. So we're practicing to begin before the process of initiation. And we're making progress. There's no question about that. Because in that same section, it glorifies the holy name. And it says, even if one, anyone is chanting the holy name, they're getting some purification. But what will happen if we don't take to this process of bhakti and accept the bona fide spiritual master, then what will happen is that we will go back to material activities again uh, because we have to do something in life. We will go, we either go forward in spiritual life or we will go forward in material life. So if we don't go beyond a certain point, then our material desires will again come and they'll be strong and we'll start taking up material activities again. So the bhakti is a progression in the first two stages, Sadao, Shraddha, Sadhu, Sangha, is meant to lead you to the process of initiation. Thank you, Gurudeva, Hare Krishna. So it's useless if you don't continue, but it's not useless if you, if you do continue. Okay. okay, we'll continue our reading. 
This is from Rupa Goswami. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj. Hare Go. Please accept my humble obeisance and all glories to Srila Prabhupada, all glories to all the assembled devotees. Uh, Guru Maharaj, uh, with the Satya Bhama's question on, you know, she gets attracted to the deities and uh, we, because we are in the very neophyte stage we don't have that much attraction to the holy name uh when i chant and i think of the holy name is of krishna and krishna's incarnation the image of krishna comes in my mind so is it okay to keep krishna's image in our mind while we are chanting yeah if you can do it but Prabhupada recommends a, a process of approaching that that mood of devotion and he says if you are chanting nicely, mm. then at some point Krishna's form will appear in your mind automatically. Mm. Makes that point in one verse in the Bhagavatam, fourth canto, eighth chapter, verse number fifty-three in the purport. Mm. You can read that at four eight fifty-three purport, and in in that pur purport it explains that. And one should not surreptitiously try to place the Lord's form in one's mind because uh, you can't, you know, you just go, you'll just go in and out of it. It's not, you can't stabilize it. It becomes stable or steady when it comes automatically when by through the process of hearing nicely the chanting of the Holy Name. But sometimes devotees do that just to reconnect with the holy name. Mm. Okay. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Is that, that clear? Yeah. This is from Rupa Goswami. My dear holy name, he addresses the holy name. My may a spontaneous attraction for chanting you increase unlimited unlimitedly by your causeless mercy upon me. Now, so he's praying to the holy name, so please increase my attraction. This one is by Harinam. This is from Harinam Chintamani, again, Bhakti Vinod Thakur. The holy name is the cause of everything and the supreme absolute truth. This is quite, uh, Guru Maharaj is quite big one, isn't it? It's the cause of everything. Uh, so I'm assuming it's, uh, in, it's in relation to Krishna, that Krishna is the cause of everything. It's not different than Krishna. Yeah. Guru <laughs> Maharaj, uh, may I interrupt to ask a question, please? Yeah, let me finish. You, you have to understand the absolute nature of this, the spiritual world works in such a way that uh, Krishna manifests himself in the form of the holy name. But particularly, and then we have to emphasize that word in this age, the holy name is given supreme position above everything. But it's Krishna, yeah, no doubt. It's absolutely Krishna. It's not partially Krishna or representation of Krishna. It's Krishna in full. Nijas, Lord Chaitanya says, Nija Sarva Shaktish. All the qualities, everything, the absolute truth is within the holy name. Therefore, when you perfect the holy name, you go through different stages of realization as you're perfecting it. You experience Krishna name as being none different than him. And then it goes to the Krishna's forms, qualities, and then ultimately his pastimes. All of the all are non different. Thank you, Gurmaraj. Gurmaraj, there is a question from Raghu Prabhu. If I can quickly ask that question too at the same time. Um, 
uh, he's asking if one is sick and not clean or unable to bath, should they can't on, uh, can they chant on clicker rather than beats? No, I don't like, personally, I just don't like clickers. I, even if you're not clean, you can wash your hands and rinse out your mouth and chant. Yeah. Use, you can use your beads if you're still in this. I did that this morning. I woke up a little before I was ready to bathe and I just picked up my beads and started to chant. But I washed my hands first. And best to also wash out your mouth too. Thanks, Guru Maharaj. Mm -hmm. There is one more question from uh, Kishori Vallabha Mataji. Um, she is asking, Hare Krishna, to whom and what can we pray to before chanting that will empower us to chant more attentively? Well, there are prayers, recommended prayers. There's prayers to Srila Haridas Thakur, given by Bhakti Vinod Thakur. I think I sent many times over the years, the series of prayers to the holy name and that you can chant to these different personalities. You can chant, you can pray to the beads. There's a whole series of prayers called prayers to the Japa, to one's Japa beads. There's many, many prayers. Mm. If somebody has a copy of those prayers, I mean, I've sent them so many times in different, on different occasions to make it available. If not, I'll send them again. Yeah, maybe I can check as well on the conference and forward it again. Uh, Namrata Mataji, you have your hands up. Maybe you can ask the question, then I can ask uh, uh, Sid so, so his question. <laughs> so Namrata is actually here, and I was the person asking the question using her Skype. Uh, Guru Maharaj, our humble obeisances, all glories to Prabhupada. Uh, thank you for this class on the holy name. Guru Maharaj, the holy name of Krishna and Krishna and the deity form of Krishna are non-different. They're all the same. So when Lord Chaitanya was here, when he went on his South India tour, he would go from village to village, he would embrace people, he would make them chant Hare Krishna, they would become ecstatic, then they would go on to other villages and they would give the holy name. This way he made all of South India Krishna conscious. So one person asked me this question. That's why I'm humbly asking you. She said, now, why is it so difficult for people to chant Hare Krishna when Lord Chaitanya made it so easy at that time by just giving the mercy and empowering people to just go on to give the mercy to others? Why is it so difficult for people to chant? Because it's been so easily available. That's the question. Yeah, those days, uh, because here Krishna is still here in his deity form. Krishna is here uh, in his books and everything. So why is it so difficult now for whole sections of society to become Krishna conscious just by chanting the holy name? Well, you have to chant without offense. There's 10 offenses along with the 11th offense, which is an intention. We have to avoid defenses. Otherwise, we'll get very little from the chanting. That's a requirement. Prabhupada would always, practically every initiation ceremony, he would always have the 10 offenses recited as part of the ceremony to let you know there's the things to do and things to avoid. So we have to avoid the offenses, especially to the holy name. And so that means Lord Chaitanya's personal presence 
That's why devotees struggle with the holy name because they're still chanting with offense. So Lord Chaitanya personally empowered everyone to chant the holy name. Whoever he met immediately was empowered to give the holy name to others, to chant the holy name themselves, and whole villages became Krishna conscious. So her question was, Krishna is still here in his deity form, and why don't we get ecstatic like that anymore? Yeah, that's the question is, why don't you? <laughs> <laughs> and it is because we are chanting inattentively and making offenses that's why we are not really able to get the full benefit of the whole each one of those 10 offenses requires some explanations hmm. and hmm. that is intentive chanting so one has to carefully avoid the offenses, and therefore the first process is to become fully aware of the offenses. Like the tenth offense is to still uh, chase after material affairs, even after understanding so many instructions on the matter. That's the tenth offense. I, I know the holy name is everything. I know that Krishna consciousness is everything, but I'm I still want material happiness, material desires. So mm -hmm. that's an offense to the Holy Name. You may have desires, but you should you should uh, not act on them and simply continue what you're chanting. Mm -hmm. Don't try to fulfill your material drives. Just try to fulfill your desire for 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 uh, Krishna. That's all. You understand Krishna is everything, and everything you're looking for is in Krishna. Why would you still chase after material things when they're ephemeral and can never guarantee any happiness, even if you get them? Mm. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Yeah, there was a question in the chat that looked yes. quite good. Yes, Guru Maharaj. So I think you answered this when, when answering uh, Sukhava, but I'll repeat the question. This is Sonal. Hare Krishna, the only form of Krishna I can ever imagine is the deity form. There is no other form which comes in my mind. So is it okay to keep this form in mind while chanting? Uh, It'll come in mind if you're chanting nicely. If you want to read that verse, uh, that statement, you can turn to the verse 4853. As I mentioned, one can bring oneself back to the chanting of the holy name by remembering the form of the Lord. But to hold the form of the Lord in the mind is and to chant at the same time is very, very, uh, very high chanting. If you can do that, but that's why Prabhupada approaches the same result in a different way. Go to the very end of the purport. Here. Um, Okay, another point established in this verse is that meditation should be carried on with the chanting of the mantra. Chanting of the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. These chat things are coming up here. Is the easiest process of meditation in this age. As soon as one chants the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, he sees the forms of Krishna, Rama, and their energies. And that is the perfect stage of trance. One should not artificially try to see the form of the Lord while chanting Hare Krishna. But when the chanting is performed offenselessly, the Lord will automatically reveal himself to the view of the chanter. Therefore, the chanter has to concentrate on hearing the vibration, and without any extra endeavor on his point, the Lord will automatically appear. 
the Prabhupada gives the clear understanding. Krishna will appear when the chanting is, is offensive. So concentrate on that. Work on that. We have more question, uh, Gurmaraj, if that's okay to ask. Uh, this is from Supriya Mataji, Hare Krishna. How to do continuous chanting even when doing mental and intellectual work? I understand we can do chanting when doing physical work, but if we are doing some desk work where mind and intelligence is involved, how to chant attentive, attentively? <laughs> well, there are devotees who can do that, but if you're not able to do that, generally we focus on the activities we're performing. But in the back of our mind, we're always thinking to chant the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. And so if you're talking with someone, you might find it difficult to chant at the same time. If you're doing something on the computer, you're concentrating on that, you might find it difficult. But in the higher stages of bhakti, when, when the mind actually becomes absorbed in the chanting, then that chanting will go on automatically, although one is doing other activities. But you can't just artificially come to that stage. It comes by purification of the heart. So as much as you can, practice chanting whenever you can. As soon as you get off this call, start chanting. And just keep chanting. Somebody starts talking to you, you stop for a minute, and then when it's over, you start chanting. So if you have a strong desire, and I use the word strong, strong desire to chant, Krishna will remind you every minute that you should be chanting. He'll remind you. Oh, why you, you want to chant my name, so chant. Thanks, Guru Maharaj. I hope that answers your question, Supreme Mataji. There's a question from Raghu Prabhu, uh, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj, sometimes during my japa, my thoughts become immersed in service, classes, festival, uh, uh, preaching, etc. Uh, etc. Often after I feel Krishna provides the best resolutions or even ideas on how to perform the service, is it okay to meditate in this way? It happens automatically. You don't have to meditate on it. It will happen automatically. If you're chanting the holy names, you'll get so many ideas how to do your service. You'll get realizations. This morning I, I was chanting and I couldn't stop writing down all the things that came to my mind while I was chanting that I needed to do. I was just constantly picking up the pen and writing down something. Not that I was trying for these things, but when they came up in my mind, I realized, yeah, I want to do that and I have to write it down in order to remember it. So I was doing that. So we have, you know, I wasn't trying to think of what I needed to do. That didn't even enter my mind. But the chanting automatically reminded me. So Krishna will remind you so many different ways. But then again, sometimes when the chanting is more absorbing, and that's what you want, then nothing comes in your mind but Krishna and the Holy Name, that's all. Okay. Three there are more questions, Guru Maharaj. Uh, is it okay to continue asking questions? I'm going to say something to Sri Devi before yes, she leaves. Yes, Guru Maharaj. Don't forget to visit your father and get to find that diary. Yes, Guru Maharaj. I, I have looked over there. Um, 
I'll give I'll me, write to you about that. I didn't even find anything later. as yet. Give me give me your report later. I'm just reminding you. That's all. Okay. <laughs> Uh, thanks, Guru Maharaj. So, the uh, next question is from RP. RP. Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances of Lishila Prabhupada. In that purport, it is said that one should not try to imagine to form of the form of the Lord. I sometimes try to think about different deities. Is that wrong? What is it? I mean, what it can I know how many times do I have to say it over and over again? I'm saying it. It happens automatically when you're chanting nicely. Work on nice chanting and, and, the, and the Lord's form will appear in your mind. That's what Prabhupada's saying. Is it so hard to understand that? Krishna's name is not different than Krishna's form. But if you put the form in your mind and try to concentrate on that, then you'll be diverted away from developing your chanting. You'll be thinking more about the form. And the form will not stay in your mind. It'll stay in your mind once you absorb yourself nicely in the chanting of the holy name. That's what this is really what Prabhupada said. It's clear. Thanks very much. Our next question is from Scarlett Pantaji. And she's asking, Hare Krishna, is it okay to chant while listening to Prabhupada's lecture? <laughs> no. <laughs> Do one or the other. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Uh, so I think questions are, uh, on the chat is finished. Maybe you can carry on reading if you want to. Yay. We got a good crowd today. Yep. 29 people came. Write this verse down, Sachivama. This is for you. We have a verse for you. For me? Uh, okay, I'll write it in the chat. Okay. First canto. We'll come to it in our series of verses. We'll come to it soon. First canto, 14th chapter. That's where you are now, or are you in the 13th yet? 13th. Okay, first canto, 14th chapter, verse number 37. You'll like it. Should I share it if you want to read it, Kumaras? No, that's for you. Okay. okay. If you want to share it, you can, but it's for you. That's fine, then I'll read it later. <laughs> Don't do it now. Wait till I leave. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah. Certain things are, I'm just trying to give a little information on the side here. It's not that we turn it into a discussion. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Today's, today is the day that you can jumpstart your chanting and get it moving again, chant. Do whatever else you need to do, but minimize those needs to the bare minimum. Chant, 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 can't, can't, can't. We practice, it becomes so good that we just want to chant more and more. Okay, so we'll see you all tomorrow. Same time. Thank you so what much. The, what is the verse for tomorrow? Um, one thirteen nineteen. Also, oh, one thirteen eighteen. One thirteen eighteen. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much for today, class. Okay. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank, Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you, Sachiba. Mataji. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Thank you.